Hello. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to overclock this ever so slightly because the last time you saw what happened and it's not going to be good if I do that again because that means I'm probably going to fry another SATA cable. Anyway, we're going to go in the jumper free configurations, go into here, set this to manual because I had to reset the defaults. And we're going to crank the CPU frequency up again, which is probably a bad idea. But we're going to go with a very, 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 very mild overclock. It'll show you the difference. And that's all that we really need to do right now. Now, as you're overclocking this and upping this frequency right here, it's going to up the um, frequency on your RAM because you're not setting your RAM automatically. It's set, or you're not setting it independently. It's set automatically. And if you go down to the AGP, there's it's in a different section, but it, the frequency also affects the north bridge, which is going to affect your speed for your video for, uh, throughput. So we're going to reboot right now, and, and this processor happens to have a 14 times multiplier. So you take 14 times 202, and that will be the speed of the processor. And, and we'll see that as I boot it up, and we'll see exactly what that equals because I'm not doing the math in my head. So 2.82 gigahertz. So basically it's a nothing for an overclock. But the thing is, I'm just showing you the difference. So it's 2.827 instead of 2.800. That's okay. So we'll reboot into Windows now. And hopefully it works this time. And then we'll go into hardware monitor, which will show you voltages, temperatures, north bridge, all kinds of nice stuff and we'll go into running a simple benchmark that's used by most gamers to benchmark the entire system it'll benchmark your cpu your sound card your video card and your ram all at the same time very good way to test it and you'll get a general idea of where you want to be in your actual system Alright, so we're going to start up hardware monitor first, and this is going to give us our temperatures and our voltages. And as you can see, you have your starting value, the min and the max. This is what's going to be the current value of what is actually going on. This is the minimum value, this is the max value. So it's going to give you a range of where your power supply is actually moving through, which will give you really good information on whether you have a noisy power supply due to the frequency of the electricity going through it. You'll also have this, which is your temperatures. You have your system, your CPU, and this one I'm pretty sure is my north bridge, but that doesn't make sense because it's saying it's 123 degrees Celsius, which if it was, it would be melting through my motherboard. This is an example of a bad temperature read, definitely, because if there was anything this hot in my computer, I would be crying right now because everything would be burning. Um, this is the CPU fan, obviously, CPU fan. It, th this is pretty much self-explanatory. If you can't figure out that this is your hard drive temperature, I feel incredibly, incredibly sorry for you. All right? All right. Guys, it's, it's, this is simple stuff. Now, if you can't figure this out, you shouldn't be touching the rest of this stuff. And I'm going to reiterate, overclocking will void warranties. It can burn up anything in your computer, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can screw it up. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. It just means do your research. I happen to know the temperature for the CPU. This can go up to 65 degrees Celsius, as I said earlier. Um, it can also have a minimum clock of five or minimum temperature of five degrees Celsius when we underclock. There are certain limits to CPUs when you go to underclock them to make them run slower to give you more um, battery power on said laptops. This happens to be a desktop, so it's not that big of a deal. But we'll get into underclocking. Right now, we're going to start up 3D Mark 6. I happen to have a registered version of it, so. I have all of the nice features and everything. And this is going to take quite a bit of time to start up, so we'll probably fast forward through this. But this is 3D Mark 06. Like I said, this is the benchmarking utility. 
that will benchmark for gamers. They use it for sound. They use it for video. They use it for CPU. They use it for RAM. The only thing it really doesn't test that much is your hard drive. And there's other programs to do that. And of course, this is off screen because we're running in smaller screen mode. But all right, first things first, we need to go into the settings for image quality and change the resolution down so that we can screen cap it. This will also affect um, the scores that you have when you're done. This, I leave all default. It's just much easier that way. So that way, when you're comparing results with other people, they normally use the defaults and they'll tell you what resolution they run and whether they're running anti-aliasing so you can compare and contrast your results with their results and see if your system is running at par. And this is 3D Mark 06 and it happens to be incredibly, incredibly bright right now. And it's going to take a few minutes to load and you got to remember this is on a P4 machine so okay that just saved this simple f image quality frame to the computer we'll close out of this now we're going to go into and select the actual benchmarks we're going to be running and because this is a registered one I can select all now as you notice this is HDR and shader model 3.0 the card I'm using is an X850 Pro that I flashed and put aftermarket cooling on to make it $150 worth $150 more and it became an X850 XTP8. Now that we're talking this is years ago, but this is one of the benefits of knowing your hardware and knowing you can overclock things. You can get an extra $150 out of your video card just by flashing the proper hardware and you have to make sure you can flash it etc so do your research you can really save some money now this is going to go through a whole bunch of different tests cpu tests this is shader model 2.0 and um, it's it's a very nice program and you will see as soon as i set up the filtering and anti-aliasing because we want to make sure this is at 640 by 480 once again and we'll close out of that and this keeps changing back and it's going to drive me nuts. Okay, now we're going to run our 3D Mark and it will give us our results once we are done. And this is going to take a few seconds before it even starts to load the normal settings. And once we're done with that, it'll go through just like we saw before, except it's not going to stop after the first frame. You're going to see a whole lot of video. And here it's going to slowly load because this is an old piece of shit computer. And right here we have our scores. Um, this is actually an incredibly shitty score. Most of the decent computers out there nowadays are going to get at least double if not triple this um, CPU score sucks ass literally uh, because most of the computers nowadays they're dual core so you could just double this right off the bat if your processor is 2.8 gigahertz or higher and because of the um, better writing like the SS um, SSE 3 I believe it is SSE 2 is higher than SSSC1, which is all writing methods for the processor and everything, computing setups. And this would be Shader Model 2.0, and that is good God. And we have HDR and Shader Model 3.0, non applicable because this card is from 2005. And the ASN, or the beginning end of 2005, not the ASN, so. I could submit my results online, but I'd rather not. I could save them and never have it open again because for some reason I have issues with that with my computer. Or I can save them to Excel, which 
is the best way to do it if you ask me. Saves it as an Excel spreadsheet. Um, gives you a whole bunch of information. As you can see, that scroll bar go real, real small. Like, ridiculously small. And then you can go down and it has all kinds of information. All kinds of stuff. All of your Kodaks, everything, hexadecimal information for your CPU. It's just a plethora of really good information. Okay, what we have here is CPUC. I'll have it in the show notes, the link, if it isn't already in that huge 